Hello, welcome to session 10. And uh, so glad you're still here and carrying on with this. Uh, you know, the good news is a lot of the homework from here on out is going to slow down just a little bit. So you can keep putting the pieces together, the puzzle uh, that you've been doing, that you've been learning. And uh, so, 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 you know, just keeping with the better but believable thoughts, keeping with the worry jar. Hopefully you've been able to make that time so much more productive and being able to sort through those things. You're able to keep your anxiety low, your anger low, you're working on those expectations and just everything that you, we've been doing up to this point. And, uh, you know, as you mark down some things, you know, where, where you still need to work, um, you know, having less homework over this last back stretch should give you some time to go back and relearn some of the things you may need to relearn and uh, just be able to get you uh, to wherever you set your goals. And um, again, just a being able to recover from this, manage all the anxiety symptoms you have, any depression that you have, and you know, just be the man or woman God designed you to be, uh, which was the purpose of this whole program to begin with. So we're, we're gonna start out in session 10 uh, with a new skill. So it is a progressive muscle relaxation. I'm guessing most of you have heard or done some form of this in the past where you're just tensing up different muscle groups and allowing them to relax. Uh, so we'll just go right into the, the video uh, for the skill this week and I'll catch up with you soon. Hey, welcome back. I'm hoping that your guilt and worry has been reduced and, and the skills that we talked about are helping with that. Uh, th th this week is on muscle relaxation. You know, as we've talked about, certain things help you and certain things don't based on your unique makeup. And um, so, so this muscle relaxation, it was one that has never really helped me. So I'm certainly not an expert at it. Um, online, you can find, you know, lots of people that are pretty heavy into this. If it's something that's working for you, you can actually listen to recordings where they'll tell you which muscles to tense up, which ones to relax and, and, and kind of find that release and calmness um you know i'm definitely like into the colors so you know it, it, if i were to do it I'm, I'm picturing that least favorite color i'm squeezing it squeezing it squeezing it till it turns into my favorite color and then i'm going to release it and i always like going low to high so i you know, start out with your toes tighten them up hold them for five to ten seconds and just release them you know, go up to your ankles, calves, um, you know, your thighs, belly, go, go into your arms, to your fists, um, even clenching your jaw, your neck, up into your head. And again, three to five seconds, clenching those muscles as tight as you can. And then just releasing. If you can add the imagination in too, that's well. But again, this, this isn't my, this isn't one that worked for me. So it isn't one that I've done very often. And that there's a lot of other videos that are very easy to find and audio things you can listen to to give this a try. But if I were you, I, I would just go lay in your bed and you know give it a shot, go toe to head every muscle that you can do, just hold it and re release it, making sure you're having positive thoughts. If you wanna use the color imagination and squeezing the ugly color, turning it into something beautiful, go for it. Um, so. Anyways, uh, ho hopefully this one works better for you than it did for me. And I, I know it's like a huge technique that's out there and a lot of therapists use it. So I know it does help a whole lot of people and, and I'm hoping you're one of them. So, all right, we'll talk to you soon. So again, I'm just gonna encourage you find a good YouTube video, you know, get the nice waterfall sound in the background, somebody with a better voice in mind, more calm, more soothing that can just kind of walk you through step by step. Again, in YouTube, just type in progressive muscle relaxation and there's gonna be thousands of videos that come up. Uh, other things that I've done that, you know, that, that I have tried that's a little more fun and kids seem to like, you know, I, I don't know, so, some of you, you know, born 1980s or before, I, I know when we were kids, we always did this, but you stand in like a, a doorway or a door frame, you put your hands down by your sides and, and you like, put the backs of your hands up against the door frame, and then you push out as hard as you can for 30 seconds. So you're tensing up your muscles. And then after 30 seconds, you step forward, you relax your arms 
And because of your muscles being stretched and tense for so long, when you relax your arms, your arms will like automatically like float up in the air all by themselves. And, and that was always a fun thing. And a, a lot of kids today don't even know about that. You, you know, I, I know me and all my friends, like we were doing that all the time because it was kind of a cool thing and, and kids love it today. And, and even like a lot of their parents will do it and, and they like it. So, so that's, a fun way to kind of do the, the muscle relaxation. Also the planking exercise when you're kind of in a push-up position, like on your forearms and you just hold in that position, it tends to tense up all the muscles in your body at the same time. Uh, so it can be a quick way to do this and something to try as well. Okay, so, so moving into this. Uh, so this is on obsessive scary thoughts. And I'll start out by saying, you know, normally if we're doing this in a group, I hand out blank note cards and I just have everybody in the room write down their most bizarre, scary thought that like, whether it's hurting someone else, hurting themselves, doing something super bizarre. Um, and so, so I would say, you know, in a group of eight people, at least six of them, like every single group has a very obsessive, scary thought and most of them have never told anybody about it before. So you get a lot of these thoughts of, you know, hurting their spouse. You know, I get this thought that I'm going to put a pillow over my spouse's head at night. Or, you know, I get this thought that I'm going to be driving down the highway and purposely swerve in front of other cars. Or, you know, I get this thing where I'm going to go to the bank and I'm going to, like, steal all the money um, and demand all the money. And they just get these fleeting thoughts and again, you know, one of the things that we'll learn about today, they start to swat at that beat. And the more they entertain it, the more they worry about it and panic about it, the stronger it gets, the worse it gets. Uh, but it, it's so, so point number one, obsessive scary thoughts are normal for people struggling with anxiety and depression. You know, I, I remember I read a newspaper article when I was dealing with all this of somebody that was driving down the road and there was a sharp curve and he kept driving forward and slammed into a tree and like died on impact. And people didn't know, like, was he not paying attention? Didn't go around the curve? Did he do it on purpose? And, and you know, there was a lot of questions asked about that. But my scary thought was, you know, what, what if I went down that road and I just kept going straight and ran into a tree and it scared me to death. And I would purposely like not drive by that area um, because that thought was so scary for me. Um, but, uh, and, and I'll tell you how I've overcome that and doesn't bother me anymore, but looking at the two sub points there, you know, many people feel they're alone with their thoughts because again, th these are the thoughts that people tend not to tell anybody, even the people closest to them, because they're afraid of how they would react. And, and again, I'm, I'm here to say, like, if you're having these thoughts that make no sense and are super scary, um, because you're dealing with anxiety or depression, it's actually normal. Uh, so, so some common thoughts that people with anxiety or depression get, you know, so sometimes it's an obsessive, they can't get it out of their mind. Sometimes it's like a very fleeting thought, um, but they, they, they get these thoughts of hurting themselves, hurting others, going insane, losing control, getting sick, um, sexual identity, religious thoughts, something someone said or something someone did, being out of control, being trapped, and, and never getting better. And these thoughts just control and consume their mind. Uh, so, so recently I was just working with a, a woman uh, and, and her obsessive scary thoughts was on shower drains. And she just became hyper fearful of, of shower drains, um, or didn't even have to be a shower, just a drain in a floor. And uh, so like she moved her office at work because her office was too close to the bathroom, which had a drain in the floor. Um, and that's all she could think about. She would not go into certain rooms of her house because it was too close to the bathroom. So, so in their shower, they had to get some kind of specialty drain. And it got to where this thought was like totally consuming her and her actions. And, you know, for the first time, she was just revealing this to her spouse, um, to some professionals and that, and got the help that she needed. Um, but, but again, all, all these things, and ultimately, you know, this woman was dealing with anxiety on top of all that. And, and this was like the obsessive thought that her brain 
just honed in on and was causing her all kinds of havoc throughout the day. Uh, but number two, the more fuel you give them, the longer they'll hang around. You, you know, so, so just like the bee, the more you squat at it, the longer it's going to hang around. Um, and, and so it's a bad habit that needs to be broken. So, so he, here's one of the keys. Research shows that if it's a scary thought, it's generally nothing to worry about. So, you know, if you have this thought, you know, what, what, what if I take this hammer and smack my spouse over the head with it? You know, if, if that scares you to death when you have that thought, you know, it, it's the obsessive anxiety produced. This is what you're dealing with thought and it's OK. You know, if you get that thought and you say, you, you know what, maybe it'd be kind of nice. I could get some insurance money. And me and the kids would be better off. And it's an attractive thought that, you know, that, that's a whole different situation, a whole different scenario. And, and, and so if you're looking at these thoughts and saying, man, you know, I, I think I would want to do that, you know, please, you know, re reach out to a therapist or a psychiatrist or somebody to help you with that. But the, we're, we're spoke, focusing on these obsessive, scary thoughts and these thoughts that totally scare you and knowing that, that those are the normal ones and, and those are the ones that just just like the Chinese finger trap and, and the, the situation with the bee that you don't want to fuel it, you don't want to feed into it. All right, so number three, you have the ability to diffuse your obsessive scary thoughts. Um, so, so, so one of the things that we talk about in psychology is survival of the busiest. So, so the more, whatever thought is the most prominent in your mind is what's going to stick. You know, so, so if somebody wants to brainwash somebody, you know, let, let's say I want you to believe that I'm the king of the world. You know, I'm going to put on music in the background that's constantly screaming in a loud voice, Mike's king of the world, Mike's king of the world, Mike's king of the world. I'm going to make you repeat it over and over again, and there's going to be punishment if you don't. You know, I'll deprive you of food, I'll deprive you of water, until like that thought becomes the, the busiest in your mind, and it's what takes root. Um, so, so a lot of the things that you're going to do, you know, the first step, you know, you can use some logic and humor about these thoughts and be willing to laugh at yourself. And, and, you know, when a thought pops up, instead of panic about it, just kind of laugh at, at it and say, you know, what what in the world, like, am I thinking of running in the middle of the mall and taking all my clothes off for? Like, like where in the world did that thought just come from? Like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like, I would never do that and, and be able to, to look at it, laugh at it. I, I'm just jumping in real quick. There's something I wanted to share. Uh, that I didn't do during the original session. And, it, and it's something that goes along the lines of being able to laugh at these thoughts and laugh at yourself. Um, there, there's something that's called laughter yoga, and it's the ability to be able to laugh at your problems. And, you know, so, so I'm going to show you a clip of one of these laughter yoga sessions and people, as they say their problems, being able to laugh about them. And it's going to seem really, really bizarre. But the evidence shows that, like how healthy this is and how healing this was for a lot of people to be able to look at their problem and be able to laugh at it. And you can do the same with your obsessive scary thought. So after the video, I'm not going to jump back in. I'm just going to let the old video continue. But, but check this out and you can see kind of that, that no matter what issue, whatever your thought is you're facing, whatever problem you're going through, that like you still have that ability to laugh at it. So, so check this out. My name is Gita. <laughs> oh, and I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. <laughs>
Yes. My name is Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> I was diagnosed with MS 19 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very good. Yay. Yes. My name is Christine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank So if it doesn't feel scary, then don't allow it to scare you. Just see it as normal. Um, so use systematic desensitization. So, so I, had a, I had a girl that I think was in fifth grade and went, went to a smaller school district and somebody in the high school committed suicide. And like she was already dealing with anxiety and mom and dad didn't tell her about it. Of course, the next day when she went to school, that's what everybody at the school was talking about. Um, so she didn't even understand really the word suicide, but the, the word for her was the word kill. And so, you know, w w when she came in, like she couldn't even say the word kill. I, I asked her, you know, cause she, she, you know, when I said, what's bothering you? And she said, a kid from the high school. And then she would stop and she couldn't even like tell me what happened. And then I asked her to write it on a sheet of paper. She couldn't even write the word kill down on a sheet of paper. And uh, so, so we had to start, again, you just keep backing up and it got to the point where let's use it in like a non-threatening manner. Okay, so, you know, you and your sister are gonna play a board game tonight. You know, you're, you're gonna kill your sister at that board game. Um, or, you know, Ohio State was, this is when I was living in Ohio, Ohio State's gonna kill Penn State or whoever they were playing the next weekend and, and being able to say it like in a non-scary way and then being able to write it and then being able to like make a song about it. So, so replacing words of a certain song with that and, until it gets to where that word is no longer scary and now you can talk about what it is. Um, so, so, so again, you know, if there's a certain phrase or a certain word that's scaring you to death, you, you know, write, write it till your hand hurts, say it till, you're, <laughs> till you can't say it no more, um, you know, make a song about it, make a book about it. And again, ju just make it lose all of its power. Um, so face your thoughts rather than running. And you know, the per perfect situation that puts this all into perspective. Uh, I was working, I, ha I had an emergency kid um, that the family really needed to come in, that school wanted me to meet with them right away. And so he comes into my office and he's only five years old. And as soon as he comes into my office and sits down, the first thing he says is, will you please put those scissors away? Because my brain's telling me to go over there and stab you with them. And, um, you know, so, so right away, my first question was, do, do you want to pick up those scissors and stab me? And he kind of got tears in his eyes. He said, no, that scares me to death. I don't want to, I don't want to do that. And, and I don't know why my brain's telling me to do that. So I knew right away, like, you know, th this is anxiety talking. This is an obsessive, scary thought. 
and he has no intention of grabbing these scissors and stabbing me. And, and as I talked to his family, um, you know, he, he had a little sister, maybe three years old. And, you know, so, so he's making like, not threats, but, you know, he, he's saying like, can, can you have sissy sleep in your bed tonight? Because my brain's telling me to go hit her with a hammer. Um, and she would, he would tell his mom, like, can you hide all the knives from me in the kitchen? Because my brain's telling me like to stab somebody. And uh, then he started making some of these statements in school to the teacher, you know, so, so now you got all these people involved, um, with the situation and the kid. And, you know, again, I, I would always ask him, like, is this something you want to do? And it was always, no, this scares me to death. I don't want to do it. I don't know why my brain's telling me. But what, one of the things that I noticed, you know, when he would make these statements, the world around him just kind of like stopped, you know, so everybody around him would panic. The teacher would panic, the principal would panic, the parents would panic, um, and, um, so, so, so it, it was almost like everybody swatting at that bee for him and sit, basically saying like, man, this is the end of the world. Why are you thinking this? You, need, you know, we, we can't have you think this way. And um, so, so anyways, I, I had him come back the very next day and I said, Here, here's what I want you to do. When you get one of these scary thoughts, you tell your mom and your mom's going to write it down. And so the next day they came and they had a decent list of I'm going to hurt this person, I'm going to grab this object, um, and all, all of them very scary. And we, we walked over to the, the men's restroom, and we walked in there, and I had him read off and some of the words I had to help him with, but, but he read off all these thoughts into the toilet, and we flushed the toilet, and we waved goodbye to the thoughts. And we told everybody around him, like when he says these things, just encourage him, like it's only a thought, you're not your thought. And um, so, so literally within a week, 99% of these thoughts went away. And I, I remember like mom laughing one time, you know, as they came into the office and she said, you, you know what, every once in a while, like I'll hear him flush the toilet in the house and I know he didn't go to the bathroom. And so she just knows like he had a thought, he went and set it in a toilet, flushed the toilet, and it was gone. Um, and, and so, you, you know, just be encouraged, let, like these thoughts are just, they're just thoughts. Um, and that, that's one of the one thing that I want you to know. And, you know, 1 Corinthians 13, 10 says, God's not going to give us more than we can handle. All right. So if you have these thoughts, down at number four, there's steps you can take. And a lot of them, like I've kind of already shared and touched on, um, but you wanna deal with them and don't dwell on them. Um, so, so, you know, there, there, there's nothing to be scared of and be willing to just deal with them, whether that's writing them out, whether that's making a song about them, whether it's just laughing about them or saying them into the toilet and flushing them away. So look for a theme, you know, is there something behind the thought? You know, is there some anger issues, control issues? Um, you know, don't try and stop the thought. You know, it's the pink elephant study. If I tell you, don't think of a pink elephant, right away your brain automatically thinks of that pink elephant. Um, right until your hand hurts, make up a song about it. Choose a replacement thought. So something that's better but believable. This is, this is just anxiety speaking. I'm working on my anxiety. I got the skills to manage this and I don't need to be afraid of this thought. Would be a great example of a better but believable thought. Um, so remember, your, your actions, you are your actions and not your thoughts. So, so what you do with them is way more important than what you think. And also take your own advice. You, you know, what, what would you tell your best friend? Or what would you tell your child um, or a spouse that's dealing with these thoughts and be willing to do those? Um, so, so I like at the top of 33, um, you know, thoughts are like trucks going by. They're only dangerous if you jump out in front of them. Right. So, so you, you can just watch those thoughts come, watch them go. And as long as they're scary, there's nothing to worry about. Um, so, so there's some great replacement thoughts in there that you can look through. Um, so, so you can see some examples. Um, let's look at the second one. I'm never going to get better and I'll be miserable for the rest of my life. So, so that's the obsessive scary thought. You can't get out of your mind. Again, you're not, you're not going to swat at it. You're not going to panic about it. 
Um, again, if you want to make a song about it, so, so, so you, you can focus on it. You're just not focusing on it in a negative way. You're focusing on it in a positive way and being able to come up with some type of better but believable thought and really that's going to make it lose its power and, and lose its, I guess, scariness. Um, so so there, there's a lot of myths about our thoughts down there. You know, our thoughts are under our control. You, you know, we, we can't control what we think. Again, that's that pink elephant. I tell you, don't think of it like automatically it pops into your mind whether you want it to or not. Um, our thoughts indicate our character. You know, I, again, it's more our actions. Our thoughts indicate our inner self. Um, the unconscious mind governs our actions. So, so what our thoughts are and what goes on in our brain doesn't necessarily translate into how we act. Um, thinking something makes it likely to happen. You know, so, so just because I have an obsessive scary thought does it make it any more likely that it's actually going to happen? Um, only sick people have intrusive thoughts. You know, I'm sure, like, like I said, six out of every eight in, in a group with anxiety and depression have these. I'm guessing if I had people that didn't have an anxiety disorder I was working with, I would still say it's probably half of them have these bizarre thoughts that jump in. Um, so every thought is worth thinking. You know, some, some of them just don't deserve the time of day. Um, thoughts that repeat are important. So just because you keep having this over and over again, that must mean, you know, something serious is wrong or you need to dwell on it. That's not true. And bad thoughts make me a bad Christian. And, and that's not true. And, and I wanted to share with you uh, just, just a brief, um, you, you know, I, I think I had mentioned, you know, I, I do uh, some comedy magic shows. Uh, but, but I'm also a comedy stage hypnotist and like I love playing with people's thoughts and getting into their imaginations. And, and so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you just a real quick promo video and, and just give you a few thoughts on that. So, so check this out. Are you looking for the perfect entertainment for your next event? A comedy hypnosis show by two-time entertainer of the year Mike Lee is the perfect choice. Mike will make your audience the stars of the show with tons of comedy and laughter. He will use the natural state of hypnosis to put on an unforgettable show. Mike is also a licensed professional counselor and has performed thousands of shows. He has performed nationwide from Las Vegas to New York City. Mike Lee performed on season four of the hit show, Penn & Teller Fool Us. He is a top choice for high schools, colleges, resorts, cruises, and your next event. Special assembly programs on suicide prevention and other mental health topics available to schools and organizations. See for yourself the show that has been called amazing, hilarious, and unforgettable. For more information, contact Mike Lee today at www.mikeleehypnosis.com. So again, hypnosis just allows me to get into people's subconscious minds and tap into their imagination. A lot of the places where these same obsessive scary thoughts would come from. And, you know, I, I've had people under hypnosis that, I mean, they just say the most bizarre things. So, so they, they create their own secret language. You could see on there that, you know, they're talking to people on the phone with their shoe. And, you know, times I'll go up and say, oh, you know, who are you talking to? I'll be like, oh, I'm talking to my sister. And then after the show, I find out they don't even have a sister. And, and you know, so the subconscious mind is a very unique thing and where a lot of these thoughts come from like just don't make a whole lot of sense i mean i've had people under hypnosis that i remember one guy just sat there the entire show for an hour and played jeopardy every time i go over there and say you know i want state capitals for two hundred dollars alex and um like had no concept of what was even going on in the show and when he came out of hypnosis he talked about like it was so real like i, I was just they're playing Jeopardy. And uh, so, so, so again, like, like these thoughts are nothing to be scared of. Don't give them the fuel and, and you know, see it as an anxious thought that, that's part of your recovery process. And I have no doubt that you're gonna do well um, in, in, in overcoming these. And you know, again, step number one is just don't panic about them. And then follow through on those steps of different suggestions, whether it's throwing them down the toilet, whether it's writing it till your hand hurts, making the song, making the book, and just saying like, I am not my thoughts. Um, you know, th this is a thought that comes from my subconscious mind. And, you know, Mike, the not only the counselor, but Mike the hypnotist tells me like, 
the, the thoughts that come out of that mind are, are always like very, very bizarre and, and funny. And, and, you know, that, that's where your dreams come from that make like no sense at times, I'm sure. And uh, so, so uh, again, you know, with, with these thoughts, they're normal and uh, like nothing to panic about. You, you can deal with them, get over them and uh, stay right on the road to recovery, which you're already on. So if you look at the, the homework on page 34, I just want you to do something this week that you wouldn't have been able to do three months ago or, or before you started this program, uh, whenever that was. So think back and use your skills. You got a whole toolbox now to build on, use the better but believable thoughts, all the skills that you learned at the beginning of each program, whatever you need to do um, just to try it out and take some notes on how it went. Um, and again, it's another thing I would love for you to email me, let me know how you're doing and uh, what you're able to accomplish. And we're, we're going to get you to those goals and uh, just give you the life that God desires you to have. So can't wait to see you in week 11.